this is Anu Benikari from iAsia News. As we can see, this month is Asian Heritage Month and we see a lot of activities and a lot of sharing the culture is going on. And I'm here actually at the Arlington Asia Times Square and a lot of programs are happening. And I think we are expecting on May 18th, the biggest festival of Arlington that, that attended by most people will be here. So just to, to explore that, we are here at the Asia Times Square. And then I would like to also go and meet the person behind building this and also to introducing this one to our Asian culture to all the people. So let's go and meet him inside and see that what exactly that we are expecting on May 18th. This month is a Asian Heritage Month and I think we are celebrating a lot of Asian culture and we are sharing our heritage and culture with a lot of diversified, you know, melting pot here in uh, DFW Metroplex. Being said that, the Asia Times Square has a very prominent and a very different, very unique kind of a history to it. And because one started as just a Hong Kong market and there was nothing on this Prairie Road and it really has created a history of building a such a big, huge, cultural, dominant place where everyone can visit and enjoy, not only just the business, but also so-called a very delicious Asian cuisine. So that's one of the reasons that I'm here to talk to a person who is a backbone for this one and put his heart and soul to build this and then to give it to us to enjoy. So he's none other than the CEO of Asia Times Square, Mr. Matthew Lowe. He's with me and uh, it's a pleasure meeting you here and congratulations on another year of such a successful you know, Asia Times Square business. Well, thank you so much, Anu. Uh, I want to thank you and, and iAsia News for this opportunity to sit down and chat with you. I'm very grateful and I'm very blessed to be where I am. Absolutely. Pleasure having you. Let me start with, because I know that it's very interesting to know, sure. like, you know, when coming from the Asian culture heritage. So we would like to know a little bit about how did the journey started for you, where it came, and also what were the hurdles that you Phase, you know. Sure. Uh, just to give you a little background, I'm Chinese, born in Vietnam, and now married to a Korean. So <laughs> I want to cover all the <laughs> bases, right? But um, it was it was just like any other immigrants that came to the U.S. We always had to overcome difficulties and challenges and whatnot. For for my family, uh, I was w one of no. I'm the youngest of six. I have five wow. older siblings, and, and my parents are eight of us. Um, tried to escape Vietnam uh, in 1977. Basically, went the fall of Vietnam, communists took over. So, we, my parents decided, you know, we got to find a better opportunity for the children. You know, mm -hmm. my, my mom and my dad did. And so, they decided to, you know, risk our lives, basically, to come to America. Unfortunately, the first attempt was not successful. We were captured. And then, once we released, uh, my dad all money from anyone and everyone who could, he could think of. Wow. And so we got on a very small boat, got on a boat. I'm one of those boat people. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, the second attempt, we were able to arrive in a, a small island called uh, Labidong mm -hmm. off of Malaysia. And it was in 1978, the U.S. government designated that island mm -hmm. as the Vietnamese refugee island. Refugee camp, right? island, right. So we stayed there, mm -hmm. not knowing where we we're going to go. Right. Just How old there. were you when this happened? Like I was six years old. Wow. Six years old. And uh, after staying there for nine months, mm -hmm. uh, we received notice that there, uh, there's this lady, uh, her name is Bonnie M M Minitra mm -hmm. and Uncle Bill. I call them aunt and uncle mm -hmm. and Bonnie and Uncle Bill. Uh, and the church decided to sponsor my family. Okay. And okay. That's, that's our lottery ticket right there. I that's that's when we knew we were going to come to the U.S. and we landed in the U.S. in 1979. So that is where the journey started to, to begin with from yeah. all the way from Vietnam, Vietnam to Malaysia to yeah. U.S. That's the first step that you took. Yeah, so it's basically about two years journey. To, two years to get journey. Here. Mm -hmm. So how was life when you got here t in America? So were you planning like six year old? What were you thinking? Like how was the life here? Well, for me, you know, as a 60-year-old, you don't know much. Right. But now that I'm older and I'm able to 
converse with my older siblings mm-hmm. uh, and my dad, and my mom. It was a challenge, definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, we our sponsor was in a, play, a city called New Mexico, Missouri. Okay. It's a very small town. Okay. Mm-hmm. I would say that we're probably the second Asian family there uh, that got sponsored. And you know, it's a huge challenge. That's a, I believe it's, it's, it's the same with all the other immigrants coming over here to the U.S. It's a great opportunity for us, obviously. Mm-hmm. But uh, not being able to speak the language, right? Totally in a new environment. That was going to be my next question. Right. So we don't know what to do. The biggest challenge is the language. And and my dad can't even find a job. Oh wow! Right. So after six months or so, um, my dad reached out to a friend who was in San Francisco, and he mm-hmm. said, "Hey, why don't you come over here and be a bus boy?" Oh, wow! So the entire family of eight of us got on a bus. Rode that long bus ride wow. to San Francisco, lived there for close to a year until the earthquake came and it scared the crap out of my mom. <laughs> <laughs> she said, what is this? What did we... Where did we yeah, land it? So after the earthquake, my dad reached out to another friend or acquaintance that he know in Wichita, Kansas. Mm-hmm. And over there, he has a job offer to work in the kitchen and in a dry cleaning place and whatnot. So we got on the bus again and, and rode. We left earthquake yeah. to Tornado Valley, <laughs> which is <in> our Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yep. And we stayed there for a good five years or so, you know, living off of food stamp and, you know, government housing and whatnot. And then my dad found another friend here in Arlington, Texas. Okay. And he just came here to visit. And in our culture, you know, when you're going to somebody's house, yes. you're going to bring a gift yes. or something. Yes. So he went, uh, dropped off this Asian grocery store and bought some fruits. Okay. And luckily the, the owner wanted to sell. And that's how it all started. Wow. We had them, they were willing to do seller finance. Uh-huh. And my dad took a chance. And he okay. run, a, it was a 2,000 grocery store, 2,000 okay. square foot grocery, grocery store off of Arkansas and uh, New York. Wow. In Arlington, Texas. Wow. And the rest is history. That's just, just history. Grew. Absolutely. That's a very inspiring, you know, journey because, you know, being given just such a big challenge and then just coming here. And when you look at it right now back, mm-hmm. what do you think? Like, how does it feel? That I feel very blessed, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I feel very proud. Mm-hmm. I think my entire family, we did it the right way. Right. And Obviously, we struggled. There was many, many days where we didn't know we were going to eat or not eat, right? Wow. But uh, my dad just kept on working hard. And I think the thing that I learned most from, from my parents and even watching some of my older siblings just work hard. Yeah. And I, I, us Asian, we're, we're all about working hard right. and, and saving money and whatnot. So mm-hmm. slowly, you know, we were able to get out of uh, government assistance, which was probably one of the proudest day right. uh, for my family, is to knowing that we had to rely on the government assistance, right? Right. Okay. But by through hard work and determination, yes. we were able to get out of the system. Absolutely. And um, now we're just trying to give back to our community as best as we can. Absolutely. Well, on this land of opportunity, I think that that is the best thing to do, and. You know, success is obviously the results. So congratulations. Thank you so much. I wonder that's like, you know, that you also have a low foundation. It means something different. Each letter represents something. Yes. I want you to say like, you know, how did that inspiration uh, inspired you? And then what made you and what exactly the foundation does? Sure. Uh, The low foundation is something that's very dear to me. because it, number one, it has my last name. Yes. Uh, and then I formed the foundation right before uh, knowing that my dad was not going to survive much longer. Mm-hmm. He had mm-hmm. cancer. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to establish something that, so that we can continue his legacy of giving back to the community. Right. And like I said, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the love and support from Aunt Bonnie, Uncle Bill. They taught us how to give back. The Asia Times Square business itself. and. Mm-hmm. You know, the standing on that Pioneer Parkway, that means a lot to you, that street. Because, you know, starting with the very simple Hong Kong market, there was nothing in this area. And you saw that when you came here. And then, so, how did it all started? And how did you come 
to plan that, okay, I want to make this one a different sure. kind of a Sure, thank, thank, you, thank, thank you for the question because this Asia Times Square is, is a very personal project of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I live and breathe Asia Times Square. <laughs> Um, you know, our grocery store started in 1986 okay. off of New York and Arkansas, which is right behind Pioneer. Right, right. And it was a 2,000 square foot grocery store and we do hard work, like constant hard work. All the brothers, the, the mom, the dad, sisters, we all work there right. to grow the business. And then with the love and support from our community, we continue to grow and grow. Mm -hmm. From there, we went to uh, Center and Pioneer. And then from there, we went, moved over to New York and Pioneer. Mm -hmm. And our business continued to grow. And when uh, Walmart, mm -hmm. this Walmart and this same club here at Corner of Basel West and, and Pioneer became available, they were dark. Okay. Uh, we'd take a look at it and we right. say, well, we love this location. Yes. Number one, it's quarter million square foot total, right? right? right. So great, great growth. Mm -hmm. And so we just took a, a chance and we moved Arlington business to, to Grand Prairie. At that time, we didn't know what we were, what we were going to call the business. It was right. just Hong Kong Marketplace. Okay. What, what's our grocery store? Mm -hmm. and so once we opened the Walmart, converted to, to Hong Kong Marketplace and whatnot, mm -hmm. then that's, we ha that's when the vision, what is the master plan? Right. What do we want to do? And so we, we went through a lot of iteration and we just felt mm -hmm. that being a pr very proud Asian American, we want to represent all of Asia. Okay. Right. Uh, and so we didn't want to call it, you know, a Hong Kong mall or some other like regional, like just one ethnic group, right? We want to make sure. Bring, and bring everyone Bring together. everybody together. Right. So that's why we call it Asia Times Square. Right. And when I became CEO of my family business, they, Absolutely. for whatever reason, they trust me, right? <laughs> they trust me and they believe in me. And so uh, about 12, 13 years ago, I became CEO of, of uh, the family business. Mm -hmm. And we were able, lucky enough to acquire this Sam's mm -hmm. Club building. Now mm -hmm. we have a quarter million square feet we call it Asia Times Square. And then as I was growing along with our businesses, I want to make sure we have a goal. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we have a mission. Right. I want to make sure we have a vision. And now I want to make sure we have a purpose. Right. So our goal as a businessman is prosperity. We want to make sure all of our business partners are profitable. Um, so our goal is prosperity for all business partners. And when we say business partner, it's not just our customer, not just our partners, but our vendors. Right. Any, everyone. Everyone. The city, everyone that have some kind of relationship with us, we want to make sure they are profitable. Yes. And, uh, and then our mission was something that uh, I believe is very important to us. Mm -hmm. And I want to make it short and simple. I don't want any of my team member to forget what our mission is. And so at the months, year of thinking over, we came up with four words. And our mission is preserving tradition and promoting culture. Yeah. And the reason we do that, and if you look at our building, uh -huh. we actually design our building to reflect preserving tradition and promoting culture. Preserving tradition is something that's important because I see it in my own children, yeah. I see it in my nieces and nephew, uh -huh. that are slowly they're losing their roots, yes. where they're coming from, and I do not want that. Uh -huh. All of us need to be extremely proud of who we are and where we come from. That's the preserving that tradition. Mm -hmm. Promoting culture is equally important because I need other culture to understand us. So we want to promote our culture to them as well as giving them the opportunity to promote their culture to us mm -hmm. so that we can all learn from one another. Right. 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 And then maybe after a 10 years or so as CEO, then I have a vision and then I launched the vision and our vision statement is to become the destination connecting cultures and communities. Communities. Um, Absolutely. And I want Asia Times Square to be a part of that. We right. want to be the destination to do that. Mm -hmm. um, with all that, a true purpose, mm -hmm. a true purpose in life, uh, I believe, is to replace ignorance with acceptance. And I'll tell you a little story. Um, mm -hmm. Before uh, I have two children. I have my son, who's uh, already an adult working prof professionally, and then my daughter. She was in high school. She was 
probably a senior, mm -hmm. so about three, four years ago. I had a conversation with her, and I've always talked about let's the the root of all of the issues that we have in our society. Mm -hmm. To me, it boils down to ignorance, mm -hmm. ignorance. And so I keep on preaching to her, and I gave a couple of speeches, and I say, let's replace ignorance uh, with tolerance. Mm -hmm. And the day I had that conversation with my daughter is one of the proudest moments I, I had as a father. She said, mm -hmm. why, why tolerance? Mm -hmm. Why not take another step forward, mm -hmm. extra step, mm -hmm. and let's go directly to being accepted? Right. And so that's why I was place, replacing <laughs> ignorance with acceptance. Acceptance. You know, Asia Times Square is a home for, you know, like supporting 60 plus businesses mm -hmm. right now, then, you know, giving them an opportunity to, you know, support their families, as well as the city economy, as well as, you know, like bringing, especially like I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. as a, the most liked part about is the Asian cuisine that yes. is the whole world is very <laughs> fond of. So I think that all in one bringing here, like whether it's an electronics or whether it is a, a grocery or a food, everything putting it in one together. So um, how is the city supporting it? And then, you know, what is the Asia Times Square is giving back to the city? Sure. I have a great relationship with, with the city of Grand Prairie. Mm -hmm. And actually, Asia Times Square is in both city of Grand Prairie and city of Arlington. We will expand into city of Arlington very soon because we're right at the city line. Right, it's a border. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're right at the border. So I have a great relationship with the city of Grand Prairie. I think Mayor Ron Jens has been a phenomenal leader, uh, along with the city leadership, the council, they've been very supportive of us. It's truly a partnership. They understand where I'm coming from, mm -hmm. and I'm very grateful that they support our causes. I, I believe Asia Times Square is a huge benefit to the city of Grand Prairie. Mm -hmm. Before Asia Times Square to see, came to the city of Grand Prairie, there was less than a handful of Asian businesses. Mm -hmm. Now there's over 60 yes. businesses. Yes. Uh, before there was maybe 3,000 right. residents, Asian yeah. residents, now is over 15,000. Yes, it is growing. It, it's growing. Right. And obviously, when you when my family took over a dark, vacant property huh. that generated no property tax, no sales tax, and look what we're able to do now, yes. I think we contributed um, more. more to the city. But it was it's truly a partnership, right? right. We benefited in the city of Grand It's Paris a win-win for it, both. It's truly a win-win. Right. But one thing that I would like to share with you about our mm -hmm. other businesses here at Asia Times Square, we're quite intentional with trying to keep a good percentage of all of our businesses here, mm -hmm. mom and pop. Okay. Mom and pop. Now, where's the money? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can go after the franchise, right? right? The franchise, right. the corporate, they got the money. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry too much about them not being able to pay rent. However, I understand where I come from. <laughs> yes. I know where we started. Being so many businesses supporting here, it means a lot because like what you said, that franchises can come anywhere. They can really build their empire somewhere else. But being in a startup is the most hard task and it is challenging and support means a lot to these, you know, the young entrepreneurs coming and, you know, like living their American dreams. So being said that, what is the Asia Times Square is planning on bringing sure. going forward? Sure. Um, there's a couple of projects that's going to be very dear to me. Uh, number one, because of our vision and because of our mission, those, those vision statement and mission statement, you will never finish doing. Yes. Right. Yes. So we will continue to work very hard, hard. to execute Correct. and follow through with what we want to do. Right. Um, the other thing is we do own a piece of land mm -hmm. in, in Arlington that uh, we're looking at developing a multifamily mm -hmm. that cater towards more of the um, Asian seniors mm -hmm. because I do feel a lot of our seniors, but you know, our parents are now getting older, and that we're slowly adapting to the the way we do things in America, where the seniors, they want to be independent and they move out and, yes. you know, and then the children are in the past and in yes. your home, they all live at, at our at house, house, right? right. Until nuclear then. family. Yeah, nuclear, very nuclear. But now we're slowly moving that way. Right. And unfortunately, a lot of the seniors, older seniors that are trying to go into a senior housing mm -hmm. end up feeling unwelcome. Right. Uh, just because it's, it's just a different atmosphere, atmosphere. you know, right. it's hard to 
cook the food that we want to eat. Yes. It's hard to sing and play games that we're so acquainted to. So uh, some different. of the people that I know have shared with me that when they li went, mm -hmm. lived there, they felt like they were kind of boxed in oh. and they didn't really enjoy. The so I do want to create a... Uh, a There's not family. enough freedom for them to do and enjoy what they right. want to do. And, you, you know, in right. our culture, we love to go outside to the park. Correct. and walk and exercise and right. talk and play games with our neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard for them to do that yes. in, in, in a non-Asian uh, complex, right. right? So I want to create something there. Mm -hmm. Having said that, it is not just for Asian. Mm -hmm. the, what Anyone we want to do will be extremely inclusive. Everything about Asia Times Square is extremely inclusive. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. What is your advice to the young Asian entrepreneur who is also coming here landed on us with american dream sure um i think the most important thing is and i'll, I'll share this with a lot of students that i have uh, spoken to mm -hmm. um academic education is always very important, important. it's the foundation mm -hmm. however you do not need a college degree to be successful mm -hmm. not in america because i think in america we have we this is a land of opportunity land of so right. what i always suggest everyone do and to my own children as well and even me i need to practice this mm -hmm. there's five d's mm -hmm. okay. there's five d's wow. that okay. uh, i believe everyone should try to execute mm -hmm. uh, and understand this correctly now i came up with this five d not because of what my dad mm -hmm. told me mm -hmm. but through through just years and watching him, you know, I understand what this five D's. And I came up with this five D's. And these five D's, again, will, if you execute these five D's, your grades return to A's <laughs> immediately. So uh, the first D is the most important one, is desire. Desire to do things. Yeah, know what your, what's your desire. Mm -hmm. And then once you have that desire set in mind, mm -hmm. you need to follow with dedication, mm -hmm determination, mm -hmm. devotion, and last but not least, discipline. Wow. I think discipline is probably one of the hardest, hardest things. Hardest one it's to most, accomplish. Yeah, it's, it is. Yes. I mean, every year, I don't know about you, but every year I'm always say, I'm going to eat right, <laughs> I'm going to exercise. <laughs> That's always a, it's, it's, I will do it tomorrow. Right, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> right. But I think if, if, if you are able to exercise to spot these, right. Um, you, you will be successful, not just in your career, but also in your Let's in Let's repeat life. those five Ds again for sure. the audience. Desire, so. determination, dedication, devotion, and, and discipline. discipline. That's, discipline. that's beautiful. Yes. Well, that's so, well, thank you so much for sharing your inspiring story thank with you. us. And uh, we really are so glad. It's a pleasure to be here to talk to you and learn so much about you and your success story here. And uh, let's uh, continue this tradition. And, you know, like, let's invite everyone here to make this story successful, even going forward and share our culture, learn theirs and make this one a win-win for all of us. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And uh, we'll see you again. Thank, Thank you. you.